Today, we're starting on one of my bucket list builds. It's something I've wanted to build and ride since we first got the property, but I've put off a bit since it's such a massive project. We've built some pretty fun, challenging, and interesting things so far, but finally, we're gonna break ground on a whale tail. And we're not making a mini or half-size version of this feature, we're gonna make it a legit bike park-sized whale tail. And what's bike park-sized? I figured a 30 foot long deck with a 5 to 6 foot tall entrance would do the trick. And I wanted to add a little twist to it. Building the raised rock garden gave me some inspiration. So we're going to make it dual terrain, a half wood, half dirt whale tail. With such a legit feature, it needs a legit name too. We have a lot of work ahead, so enough talking about it, let's get started on building Moby's deck. For this project, we're going to need a buttload of posts and beams for the frame of our whale deck. I have quite a bit to choose from around the house, but it all needs to be relocated to the work site. I can't drive a truck to the far corners of our property, and my mower biscuit can't quite drag logs across the ground. But we should be able to make it work if we engineer some added help. By strapping a handcart to one end of our post material, and strapping the other end to the bag hanger attachment on the mower, we can easily move the stuff without burning up the transmission on biscuit, or blowing out my back trying to drag it by hand. I was able to recruit Mark to help with some of the fun stuff, digging post holes. But really, I kind of wanted a second opinion on the placement of this thing. It needs to be right the first time, because once it's in the ground, it's obviously never moving again. After a little bit of landscaping, we roughed in the leading edge and marked out our post location. We decided on a length of 30 feet using six posts spaced at six foot intervals. And we're burning the post ends again to keep the structure from crumbling over time. About two hours of digging later, we have 12 two foot deep holes for our posts. We'll secure these posts with crushed gravel since it's quick and easy and it'll set up harder over time as water and movement will help pack the gravel in. Those are ready. After a little bit of teamwork, we have our posts in and we're ready to start with the framing. And the best tool for the job here is simply going to be some string. Taking this string, I'll draw out the profile of our whale tail deck. And this is where the half dirt, half wood concept is going to be pretty handy. I'm not going to bother building smooth transitions into our whale tail deck. Instead, those transitions will come from the dirt that we'll be adding on after we place our decking. We'll start by only cutting one side of our framing posts. Using the biggest marker I could find, we'll mark the posts, remove the string, and trim them down using the chainsaw. The reason we're only cutting one side at a time is because we'll be using the tops of our freshly cut posts as our measuring points for the other side. The ground is uneven and our posts all started at different heights, so this will be our only consistent point from which to transfer our measurements to the other row. Okay, so I cut just one side and left the other side uh, tall for now because I'm actually going to pull a line across and make sure that it's level so when I cut this side it'll be perfectly level. Uh, that way our whale tail won't do this all the way down it. With our posts cut and looking reminiscent to our feature, it's time to add our cross supports and ledgers. Before I do that though, I need to remove all the bark from these poles. If I don't, ants will make a lovely home in them and destroy all my hard work. Since I started trail building, I think I've found the best way to remove bark and I thought I'd share it since it saves me quite a bit of time. Some logs are still going to be a struggle, but for most other seasoned wood, ripping a line down the entire length of the log with your saw will save you probably 30 minutes of hatchet swinging. Once you have this line, big pieces can be removed at a time by peeling up from inside the screw, meaning less manual work and easier cleanup. There you go, another amateur pro tip. The way I'm constructing this, like always, is so every piece added on will be transferring the load straight down through the posts, meaning we're not going to be using the hardware to create strength for the structure. The hardware, instead, will serve the purpose of keeping things in place laterally. These 10 inch long hardened steel log screws should be plenty to get the job done and keep our beams from shifting around. <laughs> Surprisingly, this part was probably the most tedious task, installing our ledgers. Tedious because seeing that we're using raw lumber, 
I needed to find logs around the property of similar size, which is a little harder than you might think. And not to mention, they needed to be relatively straight, too. This project really helped me cope with my perfectionism. I started with the middle portion of the deck, that way once installed, the ledgers for our sloped ends will have a surface to butt up against. We'll need to compensate for the difference in our log sizes in order for our transition points to meet. There's no math here, just mark, cut, then place it, eyeball it, and cut again. That's good enough. After repeating this step six times and making sure everything wasn't too far off in measurement, we're done with framing in our whale tail and can get started on putting the deck on top. All right, so I need to figure out how many two by fours we're gonna need to top this thing. We measured the down slope, and that was 161 inches. The platform is 142 inches, and the lip of the jump is 78 inches. So adding all those together, is 381 inches. Uh, two by four is actually not quite four inches, it's usually three and a half, so divide that by 3.5. Oh, we get 108 two by fours. So like three bucks a piece. Crap. <laughs> so it was off to the lumber yard. No one said building these things was a super cheap venture, which is why I'd like to thank my Patreon subscribers. With your guys' help, it makes these builds possible. If you feel like helping out, be sure to check out patreon.com forward slash shredus so we can continue to make these rad features. And if not, that's cool too. Enough shameless plugging though. I ended up buying some economy grade 2x4s which saved us about $2 a board, which is massive. What makes them economy though? Well, they're the rejects that can't be used in framing, but the imperfections in these boards won't stop them from building an awesome whale tail, just like mine didn't stop me from winning over Sarah. Planking this thing right was also a bit of a challenge, since we're framed up with logs and not dimensional lumber. My initial thought was to get two end pieces installed and make their ends and diagonal measurements equal, which essentially would give you a square. But even though we did this and got our measurements right, it became quickly apparent that this method didn't pan out quite like we wanted. Today we're gonna to be putting these boxes, I'm making kind of square boxes to put on top uh, as a guide for the planks, because obviously you can see the last method that we tried didn't work because we're working on live logs and there's no way to really keep it square. I thought pulling diagonals would make it so we could just plank it all like normal, but it just didn't work out that way. So I'm gonna do this method to give us kind of a guide um, on one edge to butt up all the boards against, so that way it turns out square. So that's what I'll be working on this morning. Um, and then once I get those boxes put on, we can actually start planking this thing. And the guides I made worked super well and made our planks line up perfectly. A few hundred screws and an entire day later, our whale tail is taking shape beautifully. Next on the list is making a ramp to jump up onto the whale tail. We don't have a huge run up to the deck and we need to pop up pretty high. So I'm thinking we'll need something around 60 degrees to boost us up in the air and over the entrance of the deck. We need some wide boards to cut our ramp radius into, so using the Alaska mill, I ripped a couple 2x12s to work with. In order to get our 60 degree jump angle, we'll need to use a radius double our ramp height. So since we're making a ramp to be 4 feet high, we'll be using a radius of 8 feet. We'll scab a few boards together to get the correct angle we need, and then cut that out with a reciprocating saw. A jigsaw would be a better tool for this job, but I don't have one, so this should do all right. I won't lie, I usually make chumps out of dirt, and making a big kicker from wood is a bit more challenging. I did some really bad cutting with my uh, sawzall, so I'm gonna kind of fudge these ends together uh, with the chainsaw and smooth all my bumps and crud out. <laughs> With the hard part done, all it's gonna take to finish up this ramp is to frame up both sides, secure them together, and then go to town planking the face up. 
So this is gonna have to be where we stop for now. Um, this was a whole week's worth of work and uh, we still gotta make a landing. I have to massage the entrance to this thing because I need to I need to change the pit because this is right after the pit. I was hoping to ride it this week, but it's just a really big project. So that's why we're splitting this video into two parts. So next week we'll be finishing all those items and we'll be hitting it. Be sure to subscribe to catch the rest of this massive build. And if you like Moby's deck so far, give this video a like. I'm looking forward to hitting this thing, so I guess I better get busy to make that happen for next week. As always, thanks for watching today, everybody. And until next time, keep that rubber side down.